Hi, my name is John A. Egan, author of the book The Enlightenment, but God told me after one million prayers, a message for everyone. Now you're probably wondering now, why would God talk to me? I'm not a priest or a monk or a holy man, I'm just a guy that was born in Brooklyn, went through parochial school, and moved to New Jersey. But I always felt that I needed to uh, do something for Jesus, to repay him for what he's done for me. And after I graduated college, I decided I knew how to say a rosary, so I was going to say a complete rosary every day. Which takes about 14 to 15 minutes, so it's not that hard to cut out 15 minutes of your time each day. And I did that, and I started doing that, and year after year I was, I was completing my uh, devotion. And after about, I don't know, so many years, I was thinking one day, after I said my rosary, uh, is that enough uh, to repay Jesus? If I died that day, I figured out, I said probably about 100,000 prayers, I would see Jesus and say to him, I, I said 100,000 prayers, is that enough to get me into paradise? Then I thought, well, I could do better than that. Then I thought, it took me 45 minutes to get to work, and I used to say one set of the ro one rosary. It took about 15 minutes, and I used to listen to the radio for half an hour on my way in, and I would listen to the radio for 45 minutes on my way home. And I thought, I had time to actually uh, say a lot more rosaries. And I decided I was going to devote a million prayers to Jesus through the rosary. And then I thought, that's crazy. Nobody could say a million prayers. But I thought, well, I'm going to try it anyhow. So. I would say six complete rosaries each day, and on my day off, which was one or two days a week, I would say uh, three complete sets of the rosaries. And I figured out that to be about over 80,000 prayers a year. So um, I, st I said, oh, I'm going to try and do it. So I started doing it. And a uh, year would pass, and another year would pass, and it was getting done. And year after year, they were getting done. And actually, what seemed like a daunting task actually became easier and easier every year. I felt I was really being blessed as I said, those rosaries. And I realized during my enlightenment, which I'll read a little to you later, that my prayers were actually alive. They were actually working for me in heaven and for you. That my prayers will someday lift me up in heaven for all eternity. The million prayers that I said will be there for me for all eternity. For my glory in heaven. That's my treasure that I made for myself in heaven someday. So after like, well I just want to read to you what prayer means to me and I'm hoping that you can connect with that. And if you have it then you might not be on the same plane as me. I just want to tell you how wonderful it is to pray. Now, on page 56 I'm going to start. When we were talking about prayers and what you may perceive as a lot of tedious work is nothing but t time blissfully spent to someone who prays. I never realized the power of prayer. The more I prayed, the more I wanted to pray. The more I prayed, the stronger the bond between myself and heaven became. The more I prayed, the easier it became to do. The more I prayed, the better life became. The more I prayed, the closer I got to the Almighty One. The more I prayed, the more peace I experienced. The more I prayed, the happier I was. The more I prayed, the more content I became. The more I prayed, the more fulfilled I became. The more I prayed, the more I was getting in return. The more I prayed, the more I knew graces were pouring down on me abundantly. The more I prayed, the more I realized you can't give to heaven without having given back to you a million fold. Every prayer you say here on earth, which I learned through my enlightenment, is a gem you'll wear on your crown in heaven someday. Every prayer you say here, and every soul you save here on earth, will be a diamond you'll wear on a crown in your glory in heaven someday. Now, I want to, well, after about 10, 11, 12 years, I knew I completed my one million uh, prayers. I used to come home each night and park my car in the garage and look up at the sky, the night sky, because I worked at night and wonder about God, because I, I really didn't know much about God. I mean, I remember reading one time uh, that, uh, that before there was a heaven and an earth and, uh, and a cosmos, God was just like a, a spirit out there somewhere, just going around by himself, and I really didn't know who God was. So one day, after I said my million prayers, I never really asked God any questions or asked for anything, but after I said my million prayers, I asked God one question, and I'm going to read from you from the book, The Enlightenment exactly what happened that night when I was enlightened. I'm not going to read you the whole thing, I'm going to read you part of it. 
One day, as I surpassed my original one million prayers and was working on my second million, I curiously asked in an ingenuous manner, exactly who is this one I've said all these prayers to? Never expecting an answer, I felt the knowledge and presence of the universe come upon me. I felt I was in contact with something so huge that the universe and all its secrets, all its mathematics, all its magnificence, all its components, and its entire majesty were infinitesimal compared to it. It came upon me slowly, similar to the way a storm approaches. Quietly I felt enveloped by something infinitely tremendous. The universe itself seemed diminutive in comparison. What I came in contact with large was larger than the universe. A living light, greater than the cosmos, was shown to me. I saw a vision of this light shining from beyond the universe. See, I always didn't know how big God was. I always thought the universe was infinite. But I realized through my enlightenment that the, the universe is not infinite. God is infinite. The universe is finite compared to God. I saw a vision of this light shining from beyond the universe and I felt a great love was patiently waiting for me that could fulfill me for an eternity. I saw the universe, which we all perceive as never-ending, simply nested within the Almighty One's bosom. The universe was encircled by a living light, almost the way a mother would cradle an infant in her arms. That's how much God loves this creation of His. That's how much I've, I've learned, how I felt, how, how intensely God loves this creation of His. It nested safely there, and I felt a great presence of the love that the Almighty One has for this, this creation of His. Everything beyond the universe was also lit in a living light. I could see no end to this light, nor could I see where this living light was radiating from. I became aware for the first time of what infinite means. I realized how finite the universe was in comparison to the infinite glory of the Almighty One, who is never ending. It is something I understood during the Enlightenment, but I also understood that it is something I could not possibly comprehend. I did not see the Almighty One per se. No human can actually see the Almighty One and survive. I understand now that there is so much to the Almighty One that it would have overwhelmed me beyond my capacities. <clears throat> I was merely shown the glimpse of the vastness of the Almighty One. Through this glimpse, <clears throat> I felt so valued by God. Me, a wretched sinner, I felt so valued by Him. I am no one special, just another wretched sinner who doesn't even know why he sins, but I saw how God loved me so immensely. <clears throat> he loved me, a wretched sinner, so immensely. He looked past my faults. He saw me as a great creation who will eventually be totally holy someday. That's how he saw me. He expects nothing less because he only sees the greatness in me I felt a desire to be what he expects me to be. The sins I have confessed and asked forgiveness for, the Almighty One has completely forgotten. Completely forgotten. I could sense that. If I finally merit heaven, he will never remember a single one of my sins or hold it against me for all of eternity. I realize that I am the one who has to forgive myself and forget my own sins, the ones he has already forgotten. He sees the greatness in me, and I want to prove him right. I want to become that great soul I saw reflected in God's heavenly eyes. He saw me as a great creation of his, <clears throat> just as I know he sees you. We're all born to be is radiant as the sun someday. Our purpose here is to do that here on this earth. I'm not going to completely give you the complete enlightenment. The book is over 330 pages. You're going to have to read it for yourself. If you want to learn who the Almighty One is in a way that you never could imagine before, you're going to have to read this book. 
If you want to learn your true purpose in life, you're going to have to read this book. If you want to be happy for the first time in your life, you're going to have to read this book. The Enlightenment. What God told me after one million prayers and message for everyone. Now I love you. And God loves you beyond your capacity to understand that. God bless you.